Join us for the Living the Life broadcast on our series, Understanding the Goodness of God with Dr. Chooks Ugohe. Good evening. Welcome to the first broadcast at uh, Understanding the Goodness of God uh, in 2023. I am Dr. Chucks Obinau Goye. I welcome you all in Jesus' name. A very happy new year to everyone who subscribes to our channel, who listens to these wonderful teachings that the Lord gives us to bless the body of Christ. We are happy to uh, be back in the new year and um, uh, to trust God for depth in the word to bring nourishment, to bring insight, to bring revelation, to bring understanding on the character of the God we serve. Uh, we, we have been on this series now from, well, 20, 2019 actually, uh, all through the pandemic and then, you know, 2021, 2022, and now in 2023, we are still learning about the character of the God we serve. We, we, we are... We are examining the Word of God and looking at the character of God from different perspectives. Uh, the goodness of God is His character. The God we serve is an absolutely good God. There is no, there's nothing else about the God we serve. He's just a good God. He is, he is, he is so good that there is no evil in Him. There is no evil thought in Him. Everything He does is for good. The Bible says He is good and He does good. So today we are um, starting a, a new thought. I'm not sure how many uh, episodes it will be. Tonight is episode 267. It's the first one in, in 2023, episode 267. And the, the, the title of my meditation or contemplation is The Goodness of God Makes Him My Helper. The Goodness of God Makes Him My Helper. Now, one of the things that I want to say about the God we serve, apart from that, he is a very good God. He is a very strong God. <laughs> Let me say that again. God is strong. God is powerful. God is, uh, his strength is limitless. His power is limitless. And one of the things about the strength of God is how his strength reaches out to the weakness of man how his strength reaches out and wraps around the weakness of man. And this is what, what, what we want to investigate in this thought. Uh, the goodness of God makes him my helper. You know, he is so good that he, he knows my limitations, he knows my weaknesses, and then he uses his strength to cover for me and help me. All right, let's, let's get into scripture. Now, before I read, um, we're going to read Romans 8, 26. This is the first scripture we're going to read today. But before we read this, let me make a, 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 a quick remark. You know, I, I've heard people say, and it's very erroneous, they say the Bible says that God helps those who help themselves. You know, the last time I heard someone say that, I, I had to ask him, which, which chapter, which book, chapter and verse, the Bible says God helps those who help themselves. Or heaven helps those who help themselves. And they say the Bible says it. <laughs> the Bible never says any such thing. It's not in the Bible. You know, it's amazing how people just come up with things in their head. Because they've been hearing other people say it. They start repeating them and, you know, say it's in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. You know, it's like people, when people say, uh, uh, God, the, 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 uh, uh, money is the root of all evil. Money is the root of all evil. The Bible says money is... The, no, the Bible never said that money is the root of all evil. It's not in the Bible. The, what the Bible says is that the love of money, not money, the love of money is the root of all evil. The, so not money. So when people make those, you know, uh, uh, very funny statements and they say it's in the Bible, mm -mm. the Bible says that God helps those who help themselves. The Bible didn't say that. It's not anywhere. If you have it, please give me book, chapter, and verse. What the Bible actually teaches from several places, and we're going to look at a few of those scriptures today, is that God helps those who cannot help themselves. God helps those who cannot help themselves. God is, he's so strong that his strength reaches out to the weak and the vulnerable. God's attitude to the weak and the vulnerable is to protect them. God looks out 
for the weak and the vulnerable. That's what his strength does. You know, his strength does not attract uh, strength from man. No, no, his strength reaches out to the weakness of man. The Bible says that God knows that we are, we are dust. So, so he knows that we are dust. He, he reaches out to us knowing that our frame is dust, that we are weak. So, so we want to learn uh, how his goodness, you know, makes him uh, protective. How his goodness makes him a helper in our limitations as human beings. We are his children, but we are now, you know, wearing a, an edge suit that puts limitations on us. You know, uh, you know, we are not everywhere at the same time yet in the body. In the body, we are not. So, so that puts a limitation. So meaning that if I am in, in Rudyport, I cannot be in Santen at the same time uh, in this body. If I am in, in Paris, I cannot be in, Germ in Germany, in Stuttgart, Germany at the same time. If, if I am in Ghana, Accra, Ghana, there's no way I can be in Harare, Zimbabwe at the same time in this body. So it puts a limitation on us. So, but these limitations are covered by the strength of God for us. So God is our helper. The goodness of his heart makes him reach out to us to help us. And I'm trusting God that, that as you listen to this teaching and meditate on the things that I'm teaching, that you will, number one, it will make you uh, be less harsh on yourself. Because God is not harsh towards your weakness. So quit being harsh towards your own weakness. God is not... God is not embarrassed by your failures. You know, he's not covering his face in shame for your, your shortcomings. No, no, he's a gracious God. He's actually reaching out to you in your shortcomings, in your weaknesses to help you. Look at what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. <laughs> That's what the Spirit does. The Spirit helps the weaknesses of man. What, whatever those weaknesses are, he helps them. He, he, he tries to cover for them. He tries to make up for them. He tries, he helps. God is our helper. It is his good nature. It is his character of goodness that makes him help our weaknesses, not exploit our weaknesses. You know, you know in, in, in human interactions, human beings study you for your weakness and try to exploit it. In, in, even in combat sports or in competitive sports, what they do in competitive sports is to, or combat sports, is to study the opponent and, you know, understand their weaknesses and then exploit the weaknesses. So the stronger person exploits the weaknesses of the opponent so that he can defeat the opponent. That is very contrary to the nature of God. The nature of God is opposite. He knows your weaknesses, and instead of exploiting them, instead of being harsh and critical and judgmental on your weaknesses, he actually reaches out to help you in your weakness. This is the reason why, you know, when you understand the nature of God, you will approach God with your weaknesses, with boldness. Your weaknesses are not supposed to make you run away from God. Your weaknesses are supposed to make you come to God with humility, knowing, knowing he is mindful of the weaknesses and he wants to help them. The Bible says that he helps our frailties. He helps our weaknesses. He doesn't exploit them. He doesn't laugh at them. He doesn't irritate him. He doesn't turn his back on the weaknesses. He doesn't, he, he, he is not put off by your weaknesses that he walks away from you. No, 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 no. That's not the character of the God we serve. The God we serve is so sensitive to your weakness that when he sees the weakness, he, he pulls out his strength. He pulls out his love. He pulls out his care towards you. Uh, as we are going to see in other scriptures, the Bible says he's a very present help when we have needs. When we are in trouble, he is very present. Why? Because of his nature, because of his good nature. When I can't help myself, he doesn't turn away from me or trample on me, you know, and, 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 and try to finish me. No, no, no. That is not the nature of God. You know, when I see, you know, um, you know combat sports, 
uh, how when the opponent shows weakness, you know, maybe in, the, in a boxing match and he's tired, or in one of these other newer combat sports, they call UFC, you know, and they, you see the opponent getting tired or he's injured. The opponent, the person, the aggressive or the aggressing uh, uh, opponent now, you know, capitalizes on that weakness and begins to punch it and begin to punch it and begin to kick it and, you know, so that the opponent is killed or the opponent is defeated. That's not God. That, that what you see in combat sports comes from the character of the enemy. It is the devil, listen to me, it is the devil who sees your weakness and exploits it and, 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 and pushes you and pushes you to, to break down. He, he, exploit, he knows when you're weak and he tramples upon you. He knows when you're weak and he throws a temptation that you cannot resist. He knows when you're weak. This is why, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus says, <laughs> watch and pray that you may not fall into temptation. He says, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch and pray. Why was he saying watch and pray? Because the enemy is, is looking for you when you are weak to pray on you. So Jesus says, watch and pray that you will not fall into, the temptation, into temptation, for the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. So if you watch and pray, you will, you will sense the help of God and you will draw it. And if you remember what happened in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus was weak, because he was watching, he was watching, what, what was he watching for? He was watching for when the strength of God will come. Because the strength of God always comes when we are weak. The strength of God always comes when we don't know what to do to help ourselves. The problem is that we, because we don't understand this about his character, we are not watching out for his strength when we are weak. Are you hearing me tonight? We, you need to watch out for his strength when you're weak. Jesus was watching and praying in Gethsemane. His flesh was weak. Yeah, yeah, the, the pressure of what was going to be happening to him in the next few hours had just dawned on him. He was weak, but he was watching. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to get into it in the course of this series. How to watch for the strength of God because he is a very present help when you are in need of help. So you need to watch out for his strength so that you can grab that strength and grab that help. The Bible says that, that he will not even allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. Why? He knows your limits. He knows your limitations. He knows where you are. He knows what you can take and what you cannot take. So what you're supposed to do when you're feeling vulnerable, when you're feeling, you know, the pressure of life is too much, the pressure of whatever it is they're facing is so hard, is to watch out. Watch out for the help of God because it's coming. He always helps us in our weaknesses always he always helps us in our weaknesses that's his goodness makes him help us when we cannot help ourselves or when we are tired or when we are weary his goodness looks out for us in those moments this scripture says he says likewise the spirit also helps our weaknesses for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought this is a deficiency Every human being, listen, every human being in, 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 in an edge suit has this deficiency when it comes to prayer. We don't know what we are supposed to pray as we ought. If we knew what we're supposed to pray as we ought, we will pray effectively. We will pray the prayers that bring the answers, but we don't know. So our understanding limits us. We don't know what to pray. We don't know what strength we need. We don't even know how vulnerable we are. We don't even know what is ailing us. We don't understand where, where our problem is coming from. We don't know it. If you knew what it is, you, you, will, you ask appropriately, but we don't know. That's what he says. We don't know in our natural senses. We don't know. But, I like that but there. But, the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And he makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be 
expressed or uttered. So when we pray in the Holy Spirit, uh, and, and it, this is a sidebar, if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, what I'm talking about, uh, teaching tonight, what I'm talking about tonight, you don't understand it. But, but, but so, so, so when, when, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, there's something that happens. And this is one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit chooses to live inside of you to help you with, your, with the weaknesses of your flesh. Oh, come on. The reason why the Holy Spirit, in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit lives in the believer. The Holy Spirit lives in the believer. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit. This same body that is weak, this same body that has limitations, this same body that has frailties, is where the Holy Spirit chose to live. Why? Because of those limitations. If there were no limitations in our physical body, the Holy Spirit wouldn't cho choose to stay in our bodies. He chose to stay in our bodies so that he can help us. So the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us, inside of us, Bible says he, he, he knows how to pray for us. So when we engage in the Holy Spirit praying in tongues, when we engage in the Holy Spirit praying in tongues, we are given vocal, vocal utterances to the groanings of the Spirit inside of us. The Holy Spirit groans because of our weaknesses. He groans because of our limitations. Our limitations make him groan. Our limitations, you know, when you are groaning, groaning is a cry of pain. Our limitations make him groan because he identifies with those limitations, yet he doesn't have any. Can you understand this? He doesn't have any. He's a very strong God. He's a strong, his, his strength is infinite. But he is able to identify with our weaknesses perfectly so that he can, he can leverage on his strength to overcome the weaknesses. He can leverage on his own strength to pull us out of the weaknesses, to, to help us, to deliver us, to send us assistance in the places and in the times when we are weak. It's important that you learn this and understand this. And I'm sharing this from the beginning of the year because you will, you will, you will need this information. You will need this revelation. You will need this knowledge. As you push through the, the battles of life, the battles to manifest the promises of God, to bet your desire, to bet the dream, to you know, get through whatever. When, when your flesh is so weak and there is pressure to, to, to capitulate, there is pressure to give in to temptation, to give in to sin, you get to remember this. He helps you in the times of weakness. He helps you. What happened in the Garden of Gethsemane? The Bible says, and the Father sent angels to come and strengthen the Son. Angels were sent from heaven to strengthen him when he was weak. That's God. That's the God we serve. Uh, can I prophesy to you tonight that in these, in, 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 whatever, in whatever times or spaces or occasions or instances where you are extre a, a, experiencing a weakness, may strength come to you in the name of Jesus. I speak strength from the throne of grace to you. Receive that strength right now. Receive that strength right now. The Bible says, watch and pray. Watch and pray. So, so you, you, you can't be so weak that you stop watching. You can't be so weak that you stop praying. No, 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 no. You can't be so weak that you, you, know, you, 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 you cut off everybody who could help you. No, no, no. That's not the way of, of, of God. The way of God is to watch and pray. You know, you know, in that season where Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, he took his friends and the, the, those three men who were closest to him. So, so he came with the twelve, and then he took the three out of the twelve and took them further. Why did he take the three out of the twelve to take them further? Why did he take them? Because when you are weak, that is when you need people that you trust. That is when you need people that you trust. And he, he took them further from the crowd and said to them, guys, can you pray for me? Can you pray with me? And then the Bible says, as they started praying, he went further away from those three and went further away and, and fell on his face praying. By the time he came back, they were sleeping. They were sleeping. They, they, they couldn't 
tarry to pray with him. This is what you do when you are weak. You do not, you do not, you know, um, um, cut yourself off from people who love you, from people who care for you. You, you actually take them along with you so that they can stand with you and pray through whatever it is that is happening. The God we serve is a God that reaches out to us when we are weak. Hallelujah. Look at this scripture in Psalm 46. Psalm 46. I pray that strength comes to you now. Hey Amen. Don't, don't believe that lie. You know, that lie that says that heaven helps only those who can help themselves. It makes you, when you are weak, to condemn yourself. When you are weak, when you are tired, when you are weary, you, if you believed that lie, because it's a lie, it's not in the Bible. <laughs> but if you believe that lie, the effect of it is that you will feel ashamed of yourself. Because according to that lie, God does not help the weak. He only helps those who have the strength to help themselves. So he doesn't help the weak. So if you're weak, then your own is finished because God despises the weak. He doesn't help them. That's a lie. And the reason why Satan came up with that lie is so that people will not reach out <laughs> and receive the help of God, that people will not know the true character of God. You know, I've said it before in these in this teachings. One of the things that Satan is very good at is to malign the character, the goodness of God. He doesn't want man to know how good God is. And we have believed so many lies about God that we, we impose on ourselves restrictions and limitations that hinder us from receiving the help of God. But as we come into revelation, as we come into knowledge, our eyes open to draw help from God. If you're feeling weak or you're feeling tired, you're feeling overwhelmed by the pressures of life and the burdens of life, this is your moment to reach out to know that there is a very present helper who is there to lift the burden of you, to help you, to solve that problem, to make a way where there seems to be no way. This is the God we serve. Look at what the Bible says in Psalm 46, verse 1. God. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Did you see that? A very present help in trouble. The effect of knowing this truth is in verse 2. Therefore, we will not fear. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, we will not fear. Because he is a very present help. God is so big. God is so awesome. Part of the problem of our limitation as humans is that our minds cannot comprehend how loving God is, how big and magnificent he is, how strong he is. But can I tell you something? God loves you so much that everything that makes him God, he makes it available at your disposal to help you in a time of need. He makes it available to you in a time of need to open doors. To, to open doors, to fight the enemy, to, to defend you, to protect you, to lift you up. This is the God we serve. He's a very present help in a time of need. So his goodness makes him reach out to help you. So w whenever you are facing a hard time, you're facing a tough time, you are facing a burden, please understand the goodness of God, his heart towards you when you're carrying that burden. It's not for him to put more burden on you. <laughs> He's what says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 20, 28. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He didn't say, I will put more burden on you. I will put more troubles on you. No, he didn't say that. He said, I will give you rest. I will lift up the burdens from you. That's why the scripture says, cast your burden upon me, for I care for you. Cast your cares and your burden. Don't carry it. Don't carry it. You are not able to carry it. You can't function when you carry it. It's difficult to run and run very fast when you're carrying 200 kg on your back. I don't care how strong you are. When you're carrying 200 kg on your back, you can't run so fast. You can't work comfortably. You can't engage with life, you know, you know uh, uh, freely and happily. So that's why he say, cast your cares and your bodies upon me. His goodness makes him want to help you. His goodness, his go kind disposition towards you 
is to reach out to you and help you and help you. Hallelujah. Look at this scripture in Isaiah 42 verse 3. Isaiah 42 verse number 3. Isaiah 42 verse 3. Isaiah 42 verse 3. The, the word says, a bruised reed he will not break. A smoking flax he will not quench. This is God. This is the, his nature. A bruised reed means, you know, a, a, a reed that is injured. He won't break it. In the area where you are injured, he doesn't break you. He doesn't exploit your weakness and exploit your pain and exploit your injury. And no, no, he doesn't do that. He actually protects it. He, he, he tries not to put more burden on the pain. He tries not to put more pressure on the injury. That's his nature. And when we understand this thing about the nature of God towards weakness and towards pain, it will help us to be, to, to be compassionate towards our brothers and sisters. Because remember the principles that the, the way you see God is the way you treat people. The way you see God is the way you treat other people. If you don't see God as a merciful, compassionate God, you end up being mean and harsh. And a lot of the meanness in the church, a lot of the meanness from Christians to other Christians is because they don't know the true nature of God. Let me say that again. A lot of the insensitivity and the meanness of believers to other believers is because they don't know the true nature of God. They don't. If they knew it, they would respond to the weak with their strength not to exploit the weak, but to protect the weak, but to help the weak, but to sustain the weak. And you can see this all through scriptures. God says, bear with the weak. Help the weak brother. Yeah, that's what scriptures say. Help the weak person. Don't, don't gloat over their, 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 their failings. Look at, look at Romans chapter 14. He said, receive one who is weak. In the faith, but not to dispute or over doubtful things. He said, receive one who is weak in the faith. Don't chase him away. Don't make him feel inferior. Don't make him feel bad. Instead, we should bear with the scruples of the weak. We should bear with the weakness of the weak. This is the nature of God. Look at, look at this uh, uh, scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Verse 17, Deuteronomy 10, 17. Now, you know, when we understand this about God, our attitude towards our brothers who make mistakes or our sisters who fail, our attitude becomes different. The reason why we judge other people harshly is because we don't know the true nature of God. We don't know his heart towards weaknesses. We don't know his heart towards frailties and, and vulnerabilities. If we knew that, it, we, it, and, and when I'm talking about knowing, I'm not talking about knowing in the head. When we know it in the heart, we will manifest what we know. We will manifest the, the, the nature of God that we have received a revelation about. And we will tend to be more, more compassionate, more gentle to the, fra the, to the failings and the frailties of our brothers and sisters. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. The word of God says, For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords. He's God of gods. <laughs> He's very strong. He's the God of gods. He's the Lord of lords. The great God, mighty and awesome. Do you see that? Who shows no partiality or nor takes a bribe. He is mighty and he's awesome. He shows no partiality. He does not take a bribe. He administers justice for the fatherless. He administers justice for the fatherless. The fatherless speaks of the vulnerable child who doesn't have anybody to defend him. Who doesn't have anybody to protect him. Who doesn't have anybody to, to, to fend for her. That's the fatherless. He administers justice to the fatherless and the widow. And loves the stranger. Giving him food and clothing. Did you see that? He loves the stranger. You know, when you're a stranger in a place, you feel vulnerable. I, I, I have been to cities, you know, that I didn't know anybody. There's a certain vulnerability you feel. 
You know, I remember the first time I arrived in, in India. You know, it was a different culture. It was my first time in Asia. You know, and you see people who are not exactly like you, you know, in terms of culture and so on and looks and dressing and, you know, mannerisms and way of life. It, it, there's a, a vulnerability you feel in that, in that kind of area because, you know, you don't know. You don't know the language. You don't know the culture and the mannerisms of the people. So you are gentle. You are careful so that you are not offending people. You're not doing things that you're not supposed to do and so on and so forth. But the Bible says... When a, a person is feeling like that, it's God. The strength of God comes. The Bible says he, he loves the stranger. He reaches out to the stranger. He gives to the stranger protection. He gives to the stranger. And then he turns around. This God turns around and says, do the same thing. Do the same thing. Look out for the stranger. Look out for the fatherless. Look out for the widow. Look out for, for people who can help themselves and help them and minister to them and, you know, just be nice to them. This is what God says. So he says he gives them the stranger food and clothing. Therefore, love the stranger. Can you see that? Verse 19. Therefore, love the stranger. So, so what he says is imitate my character, you, you know, take on my disposition towards weakness and vulnerability. So I want you this week to look out for, to look out for, for, you know, people who are going through stuff. Look out for people who are going through, you know, one situation or the other and reach out to them. Reach out to them first in prayer. Reach out to them you know, with, with, with kindness, with love. Find ways to help. Find ways to, to succor them. Find ways to encourage them. Find ways to strengthen them. Find ways. This is what, what happens as we get to know the character of the God we serve. Then we can reflect him. Then we can manifest him properly into, in the earth. I, I believe, God, that you got uh, the, the, the essence of this message. I'm going to continue tomorrow. Uh, I'll shed a light and I'm going to show you more scriptures. The goodness of God makes him my helper. I receive his help to, to, today. I receive his help this, this week. I receive his help this month. I receive his help the whole of 2023. In the areas where I fail, in the areas where I, I don't meet up, in the areas where I come short, I expect him to make up for me. <laughs> because I know his goodness. Father, we reach out to you in the areas where we come short. We don't get it all right at all, at all, you know, at all, at all times. We don't get it right. We don't know how to pray as we are supposed to. We, we make mistakes. We, 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 we don't understand what is going on. We don't understand you know, the limitations and why things are not working the way they're supposed to work. But we look to you. We look to you. We look to you and we ask in the name of Jesus for help and strength. The way that you reached out to Peter when he cried out, Lord, Master, save me. You reached out and pulled him back on water. He didn't drown. He didn't drown. He was in a vulnerable moment. He was there about to drown, but he cried out. And because of your nature to help the weak, to help the drowning, you pulled him out and you helped him. So I pray for myself. I pray for my listener. I pray for anyone who is in a drowning situation. I pray for anyone who is in a situation that's overwhelming, who is in a situation that they don't know what to do. I pray for South Africa, even in the current energy crisis and the power problems. I pray in the name of Jesus, the help of God has come. Oh, the help of God has come for the nation. I pray for the president. I pray for all the people who are making decisions, who are carrying the burdens of the current crisis. I pray for help in the mighty name of Jesus. For our God is a very present help in a time of need. South Africa is in need. We ask for your help. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. I'll see you tomorrow as we continue this meditation. Uh, the goodness of God makes me my helper. Good night. God bless you. Bye-bye. There comes a time in your life when you need a change, an upgrade. You need upliftment. You need lasting results. You just want your life to be real. You need your life to be meaningful, deep, full, purposeful, and easy. You're looking for enlargement, amplification, increase, strengthening. You're looking for growth in your life. 
You want leverage, strategic advantage, gain and favor, ability to influence, clout and strength. Join us at Resurrection Life Church every Sunday. Visit our website, reslife.org.za for more information. Make this year your year of being real. Embrace rapid enlargement and leverage. It is your time.